So in the last video, we showed that this function here, uh, this, this 1 over root pi times the integral from 0 to x over square root for kt, time of the integral e to the minus r squared plus a half, um, is the solution for the Cauchy problem for the heat equation on the real line for positive time, where the initial condition at t equals 0 is given by the, the unit step function. So um, if we now, oops. Um, go ahead and differentiate this with respect to x and call the result g. So g is wx of xt. Um, then we get 1 over square root 4kt pi um, uh, e to the minus x squared over square root for kt. And so this uh, then solves the, the corresponding Cauchy problem for, for a point source. And so we say that um, <coughs> G is the fundamental solution uh, <coughs> for this problem. Um, it's also called the uh, Green's function, which is why there's the g there. And for this particular problem, since it's the heat equation, it's also referred to as the heat kernel. And so the reason for this, um, <coughs> uh, so this is the heat kernel, specifically the heat kernel on R, or on R1. And the reason why is because we can use this as the kernel of an integral operator, which will solve the problem for any um, initial conditions. So let's look at it this way. If the temperature at, at y, uh, let's say temperature at point y1, fix the point y1, is given by some number, say phi of y1 is, is the temperature at y1. Um, so, so we change the number, the, the temperature from 1 to y1. And we've still got a point source. Then um, <coughs> phi y1 times, and then we uh, translate the heat kernel right here so so this is point heat kernel for the point source at y1 with temperature phi of y1 okay so this is um, <coughs> going to be the resulting uh, temperature surface. By which I mean it's, it's um, if you do a 3D plot of the, um, uh, this as a function of, of x and t, then that resulting surface is going to be showing you how the heat uh, behaves for a point source at y1 of magnitude phi y1, right? And so <coughs> the idea is we start off by looking at uh, a situation where there's a point source. So here's a silly picture. So this is a point source at 0 uh, with, with magnitude 1. 
and then we can switch and we can uh, move that point source somewhere else. So here's Y1. And it's now given a height of whatever this value is. So now we're looking at Vy1 times the Dirac based at Y1. Um, and there's no reason why we can't uh, expand this even more. So by superposition, we could say, well, what if there were a few point sources? So now we've got y1 and y2 and y3, and they're corresponding phi values up at the top. So this is at height phi y2, and so on and so forth. Um, <coughs> and so by superposition, we can just add all of these together. So, <coughs> um, so from this one that we had before, uh, we are led to something that looks like uh, a sum and oh well maybe I'll put this over by the one it belongs to there we go okay so <coughs> there's the resulting uh, temperature surface for, for a collection of um, point sources that with different magnitudes, something that looks like this. And so you can see that, uh, for example, if we were to take the limit as t goes to 0, this would collapse back to being uh, some function phi. So here's, here's my portrait of phi back here. Uh, oops, sorry, I circled the wrong one. It's this one right here, as t goes back to zero. Um, so then we could take this one step further, and instead of having just a uh, discrete sum of point sources, we could have a continuous uh, distribution of point sources. So maybe now something that looks like this. And so then in this case, instead of having that discrete summation, we would have a continuous integral And so if we integrate that with respect to y, then we would get the resulting uh, temperature surface from such an initial condition. And again, you can see that as time goes to zero, this will take you back to phi. So um, in the intermezzo, I referred to this as uh, doing a convolution of phi with the heat kernel. Um, and then since the heat kernel tends to a Dirac delta as t goes to 0, when you do the convolution with the Dirac delta, you get back the same function that you began with. So. Our final solution for a given initial condition phi is the integral of phi against the heat kernel. Now this is an integral representation, um, so it might need to be uh, crunched numerically for a given application, uh, but that still allows you to solve the heat, uh, the Cauchy problem for the heat equation with any initial conditions whatsoever. So uh, I made a remark a moment ago where I said it's called the heat kernel because it's the kernel of an integral operator. So what I want to... Um, the, the last comment I have about that is so there's the idea we can take phi and we can transform phi by mapping it to the integral of phi y times g
actually let me remove the dot let me rewrite this as uh, there we go v of x like this and so so this operation right here uh, will show how the heat equation blends or smears out the initial condition phi uh, by time t. So in other words, what we're doing is we're saying, uh, I'm going to take this uh, phi here, and I'm going to transform it into, and I'll just call it pt of phi. And pt of phi is what phi looks like. Um, after uh, the heat equation has evolved it by time t. So I'm trying to get Mathematica to do a little animation for us here so we can see uh, what this looks like. I'll put that in another video.